Your what's good YouTube? It's your boy Nehemiah, aka Neil, and today we're gonna be talking about the OKC Thunder. Now I know, I know, they aren't the best team out there. Uh, they have been notorious for just taking for picks, and honestly, they're not really that fun of a team to play uh, to talk about during the season because they're just tanking. But they do have a lot of fun players. Shy Gil uh, Shy Gilgis Alexander. Uh, sorry if I butchered that. Lou Dort, my boy. I wish he was on my team. And if I'm not mistaken, they have Chet. They do have Chet. And Chet is a guy that we're going to talk about. But if this team can resemble any type of uh, grit and grind that they did in the 2020 season, if they were able to actually play basketball in a way that is conducive to winning, give it to me that these guys are going to be in the play in at least and not only that, but they're building a really solid roster off of young players and a bunch of draft picks that they have going into the next couple of years where I genuinely think that they could maybe be one of the up-and-coming dynasties. But let's talk about it. And before we talk about it, uh, one thing I want to note, all these, uh, for the next couple of videos, uh, especially the shorts, I'm pre-recording this because I'm about to go on a vacation, going to go to the Bay Area, so this is a lot y'all know, but let's get into it. So, Shea, he is one of the best creators in the league, hands down, and we just need to accept it like this. I know that he didn't really have the best year uh, this season. He actually took a lot more shots and barely made more shots than he did last year, uh, especially with the three-point The three point, uh, stuff is really concerning. But at the same time, he could just work on it. So it's not really something that I'm going to be really worried about. But his true shooting percentage right now is 56%, which is still above league average. True, true shooting percentage last year was 62, which is borderline elite. And I think that he's a top 25-ish player. He's a very underrated player. Um, and I know that advanced analytics love this guy. I don't, but... I still think that he has a really good uh, role on his team. He's a really good player. He's, again, top 25 player. And I think that he is on the cups of being a superstar. I think if we do see a most improved player next year, he he could take the spot, especially if he uh, jumps to like 27, 8, and like actually plays to the point where they're actually winning games. Uh, I'm pretty sure that when Shea plays, they have like a, a round of 45% winning percentage, which is really good for a team that really needs uh, guys who can really just dribble the ball, just, you know, do everything that they can. And yeah, uh, as for the other people on the roster, again, Lou Dort, he's my boy. Like, do I even need to say anything? He He's just that guy. He's just the ideal 3 and D player in this league. Even though he doesn't shoot the best from 3, 33%, he's still giving it his all in that end. And honestly, that's all I really need from him. And I'm pretty sure earlier in this year, he shot, what, a really good percentage. For the first 28 games, he shot, oh, wait, never mind. He shot 28%, never mind. Uh, how about the first 21? Oh, never mind. Never mind, one, never mind what I said. But essentially, uh, these two players just didn't play for the last... Like, ever since All-Star break, break, these guys didn't really play. And that's really concerning in terms of them just tanking. But I think that this is Sam Presti's year to actually make a move in terms of how they really get to the top. Because I think Chet is probably going to be their deal breaker. Looking at OKC... As a team last year, they were really struggling on the defensive end and the offensive end. But I think that Chet is going to help with the defensive end. Uh, I didn't really watch Summer League, but if I'm not mistaken, he was really good on the defensive end. Especially when it comes to the pay protection that he always offers. He's really good on just having a lot of gravity around him at the rim and yeah, just deterring a lot of shots that were would have been really good layups if not just 
really efficient shots. So I think that Chet being on this roster really just helps with that. They also still have really good players like Mike Muscala, who's a really solid shooter. Uh, even though he's at the age of 30, I think that he could still just benefit from being on this younger team. Uh, Jalen Williams, I I completely forgot he was on this team, but he's still a he's still going to be a really good guy. Uh, he's a really good draft pick. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's a really big forward. I think that he could be a really good fit around uh, Chet Holmgren. So I think that's really good. And they also have another Jalen Williams. Uh, this is a really good guy who can really create his own shot. A uh, really good uh, winger wing player. Uh, and I think that he's also a guy who could fit well with uh, Shaggy Gogas Alexander. Uh, also, that reminds me, Josh Giddy. Now, he's been a really controversial player around NBA Twitter. Josh Giddy, for some reason, is just a guy that a lot of people just don't like. And I can see it. Uh, not really good three-point shooter. Not really good shot creator. And he does suffer from the what I will call the Ben Simmons syndrome. And we, what are you talking about, the Ben Simmons syndrome? Now, the Ben Simmons syndrome is a really good playmaker. Or let me rephrase that. A really good passer who really lacks the scoring edge to become a really elite playmaker. Think about a guy like Russell Westbrook last year. Uh, he really didn't bend the offense or bend the defense at will at some times. While a guy like Giannis, for example, he doesn't really uh, toss the ball that much or even really get that much assist, but he does just bend the will at the defense to the point where he could just create shots like he had in the game one of the Celtics series. So I think that if he could just improve on his offensive selection uh, or more than that, if he could just be a better uh, shooter, if he could just be a better uh, ball handler, in terms of just creating his own shot, I think he'll be really solid because uh, he did really have a successful or somewhat successful uh, rookie year. Uh, the only problem was the last, like, 22 games he just didn't play because OKC tanks. Again, this all falls under whether or not OKC wants to tank because all these guys last year just did not play the last 22 games. I don't understand how Adam Silver lets this shit happen, but he, he let it happen. Jeremiah Earl Smith, he was pretty solid last year, actually. But I'm not sure if he's really going to get so, uh, so much minutes this year. Um, who was another player? Darius Baisley. Not a solid three-point shooter. I don't think he's probably going to get that much minutes. But in the OKC 2020 run, he actually played really solid in the in the playoffs, you know, fifty percent uh, shooter. So he may he may have it in him. He may have it in him. You never know. And I think that's really it. Kenrich is a guy that they drafted a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I think I've talked about pretty much all the notable guys on the roster right now. I think that the only problem is is whether or not they can just make that jump defensively. Uh, I think that if they could, they could be probably like the 11th, 12th seed, even if they really tried to get the play on, play on, ooh, the play in spot, excuse me. So uh, I think that's really good. However, I just think that's it about this team. There's not really much to say outside of Lou Dort, Josh Giddy, Shea, and Chet. So that's it. Uh, this is your boy Nehemiah, aka Neo, and I'll catch y'all later.